Doing a bud. Sitting here looking at my pens like we all do. We just get them out sometimes. You just have them everywhere and you're looking through them with your loop. Maybe you're measuring them and you're just looking at your pens. And then I thought about it a second. I thought, in my mind, in my view, which pen is the best engineered pen of all these ones I got sitting in front of me? There is, though, one pen when I take it apart and look at it, but and really take it apart and really look at it, just blows my mind from the engineering perspective. And that's the Lamy 2000. I will say this. Generally, when you buy a pen from a manufacturer that makes their own nibs, you're in for a treat. It's going to be a pretty good pen. If they're going to go through all the trouble to make their own nib, uh, they're not going to blow all that resource and time and energy on a crappy subpar pen, typically. Okay. But why the Lamy 2000? Why this one, does this one really seem to stand out? Let's get into it. We're going to take it apart and chat about some of the little details and just how much thought goes in to making a part the way it is and how it functions. So why the Lamy 2000? I apologize for all the shadows. Trying to get the right lighting on a black pen is tricky. I even had to change the refresh rate because nothing's analog every, anymore. It's all digital, so the refresh rate on the light was messing with the refresh rate on the camera. Anyhow, um, you've seen probably lots of reviews on this pen. You can watch mine. You can watch some other ones. We all know it's very well made. Uh, the grain structure, the direction the fibers run to hide things like the piston filler knob that just seems to appear from nowhere. All great things about this pen. Cool clip. But uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's take this further apart. So unscrews with very nice threads. These little guys here. I'm going to talk a lot about this little ring. <laughs> I hope you stick with me. If you haven't taken the feet out yet and the nib, you just again, it just comes out real easy. Lamy makes their own nibs. Like I said, if you buy a pen from a manufacturer that makes their own nibs, chances are you'll get a decent pen. A little O-ring, that slides off. You think you're done, you're not done. Oh, lighting in focus. Are you my friend today? There we go. So this feed, actually, if you put your fingernail here and slide back, there's more stuff to come apart. Okay, see how that says here now? You slide this back, that comes apart. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in a bit. So they did a great job with designing this feed to ensure the whole thing is going to get saturated. So this goes into the section and the whole thing's going to be, it's very much like a, like say a Parker 51, how the feed unit works. It's going to be saturated all the way around. It's really great. This channel's deep enough. So it essentially fills from the inside out. I'll show you that in a second. But you can see these slits run all the way down, nice and deep grooves to hold a lot of ink straight into the nib. So if you slide this back in, it only goes one way. You can't do it wrong. Whoops. Put that back in. There we go. Beautiful fit on there as well. So this will go into the main body of the pen. When you put it back into the section and you put it all together, this goes into, well, let's put the O-ring on. Hold it better. There we go. So this goes right into the piston area. So you can see a nice fit. This will get compressed when you screw it down, one to seal it, but also even that, the length of these threads to go into these threads so you get the proper compression on this o-ring so you don't go too much or too little there's a lot that goes into that even sourcing this to have the right durometer rating on that little o-ring as well that's a custom dealy most likely there's no, there isn't anything that's not that isn't overlooked on this these little holes the amount that went into this configuration to ensure the proper amount of ink goes into the feed, but not too little, not too much. And because it's going into the center, it's a two-piece. It essentially goes fills from the center out. They, again, they also designed it so it goes straight into the nib as well. So there's a lot that goes into this feed while you just don't have issues with ink starvation on a Lamy 2000. Let's put it back together. The nib just slips on. Easy peasy back into the section. 
Again, there's a groove here, so it's keyed, so it only goes into the section one way. You has to, because it can only fit one way. Now, oh, there was one teeny little fault in the whole pen I could find. There is a tiny little burr on this edge right here on this hole. I'm just touching it now with this. Like, it's just holding up this tiny little burr. <laughs> That's the only thing I could find. And on the inside, too, uh, you're probably not going to see it with the lighting. It's just impossible. But on the inside of that hole, too, oh, will we get it? Okay, you can see the inside hole. There's a tiny little burr. Just if you, I can't touch it, but I can point where it is just on the inside, too, when it on the blow through. I know we don't care. I don't care about that. But I thought if I'm going to nitpick, let's get nitpicky. Now, this ring is mega important. So it's got those little ears on the side. It's a circle, but it's not a full circle. Why is that? It just fits in here, right? Goes in. There's little tabs, little notches, I should say there. These are the tabs. So it goes in. It can go in either way, notch up or notch down. Why didn't they just make it a circle? Well, it needs... Oh, focus you. Come on. Be my friend. There we go. If you can see that, it needs to compress. See, because that is notched out, this ring, you can squish it a little bit. And that's super important for the whole capping mechanism. That relies on this entirely. Put this back in there. So one little tip when you put it in and line it up with those tabs, you just give it a teeny squeeze. Oh, I didn't do it right. Little teeny squeeze to compress it. And then it sits in there just inside that groove ever so slightly. Kind of like a snap ring if you ever use one of those. So if it's moving around like it on like mine is right now, if you just give it a little squeeze, there we go. It'll stay in there. You tighten it down, you're compressing that O-ring. Now you're there. So how does it make that awesome click sound? Let's get it on the mic. Okay, for that, we gotta get into this cap. And for that, obviously, I need to get some better lighting. Okay, here we go. Got you zoomed in on the cap. This is gonna be tricky to show you everything. So you got these four springs here. These guys here, okay? Now, what they do is they give that sort of tactile feel when you're pushing the, the pen into the cap as a bit of a resistance. They'll compress those. Now, it's well engineered. So there's this sleeve that they all fit into, and you can see these can move around a little bit. So they're not being overly constrained, which is really good. You just want to let... Sorry, I keep bumping here. I'm sorry. You want to let the spring move around a little bit where it wants to go. Very smart. Okay. Next up, it's going to be, again, trying to show you this. This is the ring here. So the pen comes in, so those tabs, those springs are actually putting resistance on here to give that feel when it goes in, a little bit of resistance it builds, and it's a nice tactile feel. One thing, so this is stainless steel, you got to go with a uh, softer material than this or else you're going to scratch it. So, I mean, that almost looks like it's copper or something like that. I'm not sure the exact composition, but that's smart. You need a softer material. Then you got here, so you don't cause a lot of scratching. As you can see, there is no scratching. Okay. This little ring right here. I'm going to have to do a little drawing off camera. Oh, and the focus. It's so difficult. Here we are. Okay. Pen comes in. Those little tabs, that's the most important part. They'll hit this little tiny lip right here. You'll barely feel it. And then what happens, it goes in, and it falls into this little groove. You listen to it my, with my with this tip here. You can see what you mean by that snap sound. And this, there's another lip. I'm going to do a drawing to show you the diameters. That's got a very square edge to stop them from going in any deeper. So this back edge here has a chamfer. This front edge doesn't. And that is the whole clipping mechanism. Let me give you a drawing. So what we got inside is this as a sleeve. Okay, so it's like this. Let me draw the cross section so you can see what I'm looking at. So the pen will come into the sleeve, but there's all sorts of cool action going on inside of this sleeve. Let me draw you a cross section of it. So looks like this. Okay. 
Okay, so it's a little cross section here. Within that sleeve, there's a groove. Let's get the pen to show you why that's so important. As the pen goes into that sleeve, these little tabs here will now compress inwards. They'll get squished. They'll go in, like I showed you how this whole thing can get squished. They can go in. Do that with your pen. You'll see they got a it's a spring. Okay. So they get compressed by stepping up here. Now what happens is this is a larger radius. So let's call this outermost diameter, this diameter here. That's what we're looking at. That's the same one. Let's call this diameter number one, or let's just, let's call it diameter A. Okay. This ridge here, okay, this groove that's cut in will be diameter A plus, let's say half a millimeter. And they would put those zeros in the drawing. There's a very tight tolerance on that. So what happens is now, that those ears are comp compressed as they go in, they get to the groove and they snap open. And that's where you hear that it's metal on metal. They give that satisfying little click sound when the pen cap goes all the way in. That's where it comes from. But then there's more, wait, there's more. This diameter, okay, it's actually, if we can look on end, let me go back to the cap. Let's see if we can see it. Okay, you can sort of see it with all the shininess here and hold it straight. So you have this diameter. This other edge you see that's just past that groove that the ring snaps into. It's a slightly smaller diameter. So if this one is the same as this diameter plus a little bit, say half a millimeter, this one is diameter A minus half a millimeter. Okay. This one too, there's a little tiny chamfer on there. So that means that lip is just rolled a little bit. So it's a nice tactile feel when it goes in. It's not a steep bump. It's a nice, it just engages slowly over that edge. This one here has a crisp edge. So you can't push it in any further. So those tabs have fully expanded and into this larger diameter. So they fully expanded and this diameter is smaller than the one that compressed it. So it just, it's too much of a step up. So you can't over cap this pen in depth you can go like this that's it it's not going any further so just in case that didn't make sense here's a little side view this is the opening a that diameter these little ears come in they get squeezed like a spring they come in nicely rounded edges into this new diameter it's a little bit bigger a plus half a millimeter boom they open up they're fully expanded and they can't go any further because we've created this step here. We got a smaller diameter and we got a harsh edge. You can't go in too deep and it comes out with a nice feel. I'll tell you from working in this industry, the number of pins probably laying around the Lamy floor or the design desk, they'll be, they'll, they would have kept a couple that you just can't open. They screwed up, you know, this ratio here, this lip and the engagement. And it went, okay, let's try it out. Click. And you couldn't get the sucker open. That guarantee there's pens floating around on an engineer's desk somewhere that you just, you can't open. And he'll go, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you can open this pen. And you wouldn't be able to do it. That's why. The, the amount of thought that had to go into this design and this manufacturing, the right steel, the right size notch that went into that whole decision-making process to give Lammy that nice little click design snap cap that works so perfectly on here and still keep it on secure but easy enough to pull off give a nice tactile feel so you got these little springs in there to help give that feedback as well there <laughs> there is a lot of time that went into designing that the top of the cap how this goes together so this is actually a plug that gets made um, if you looked earlier oh, let's get you in there again so at the very bottom, you can see that plug. It's got some of the uh, ink still on it. You know, you get a little nib creep on there. Um, so that plug gets pressed in from the outside and it's the same material. It's the same Macleron. And what they did, that shininess, that's just, they just polished the material. 
someone was playing with the stuff when they were in the manufacturing process and you can see the edge it's not quite perfect let me get some focus for you here so they just polished that on like a buffing wheel or something you can see the edge goes down a little bit further here just when they put it on the buffing wheel they buffed a little more of the shoulder here than they did here so that's most likely hand buffed or at least the machine came along but it's the same material which is great this stuff is great to epoxy uh, to bond to each other so that plug is not coming out gets pressed in there it's got a finished finial for a nice design and i would you know if i get the channel to the point where i could take a lamy pen and fully disassemble and mess with it and not worried about the fact i just potentially destroyed a 200 dollars pen maybe i'll see if i can find a cap on ebay really cheap but i would love to take that plug out and also get this clipping mechanism because they didn't just do a clip it's a pivot mechanism so there's a lot of actually a lot of german pens do that but they have this pivot mechanism versus a standard clip and so if we look in real close this plug comes in and most likely i'm not sure exactly how this is assembled but i have a feeling there's a whole clip assembly that goes in here so you have this sleeve part this nicely beautiful little machine sleeve there's this liner assembly with these guys okay the cap liner down there you'll have the clip that goes in the clip assembly i'd love to see what that mechanism is and finally there's probably a little jig that gets all put together and i'm thinking how it goes in there's probably a little lip that's machined here too so it controls the depth it all just goes in exactly in the right spot because where these dog ears are that is a critical dimension these have to fall perfectly in line into that little bore that's in there so they're going to really want to control when this goes together how far deep down this stuff goes so the thought and engineering that goes into this pen that we all enjoy to me just shows another whole other level as to why this is such a great pen so i know looks is a big thing when it comes to pen and who doesn't love pretty looking pens with cool shapes and cool colors and cool designs and all that stuff but what to me really makes a pen, and these are just the things I notice. When I grab a pen, these are the things I start looking at right away. And every time when I really look at this Lamy 2000 of all the pens I I own and the ones I've used, I would just have to say this is the best from an engineering perspective. Well thought out and engineered pen. Like the amount that went into this click is very deep <laughs> and there's a lot of trial and error and goofs that went into that but this is very complicated that's complicated now again you could talk about over engineering and there's a bit of a trend with that with with german products sometimes but this is just a perfect balance of thought and consideration and great manufacturing ability as well and also just drive to make a, a fantastic product for the end user as well and no compromise so again there's a reason there's some really great brands that have lasted and some amazing pens that have lasted and manufacturers that have weathered the storm and are always producing great uh, products so lamy is one of those and again the, the looks might not be for you you might like your beautiful colored materials um, but as far as reliability there's a reason this, there's a lot of people buy this pen. The looks is usually it, and it's got, you know, it's a piston filler, it's a gold nib. You can hold it wherever you want. All those things that people typically talk about. But for me, the reasons I went through here are some of the reasons I think this pen is fantastic. I, I hope you kind of kept along with that. I didn't put you to sleep. But this is me in my little office looking at my pens late at night. This is what I do. I think I got a problem, but I'll keep making videos if you keep watching them. So I appreciate it. Likes and subs, comments are always welcome. Have a good one. We'll catch you next time.